All right, so um, here we go. So I've kind of laid out the steps for solving any sort of equilibrium problem. Uh, I will say steps two and three are somewhat interchangeable. Um, and steps four and five are kind of interchangeable, but they're all there. You need to do all of these things, okay? So first thing is you need to have a balanced equation when you do a nice table. And you know that because that's what you write at the very top of your ice table. Um, depending on what the question is ask, asking for or gives you, um, you can put in your initial concentrations. You may need to calculate Q, remember reaction quotient? So when you don't know if you're at equilibrium, okay? That'll help you figure out which direction the reaction needs to proceed in order to reach equilibrium. Then you can write your equilibrium expression with K, uh, determine what you would have at equilibrium from your ice table, substitute into K, solve, check your answer. Okay, so this is new. If you want to take a picture, whatever, um, write it down. So uh, we have a reaction that takes place at 250 degrees Celsius, and we're saying that uh, the equilibrium constant K sub C is 0.19. So we're going to have, excuse me, H2 gas plus sulfur in the solid phase in equilibrium with H2S in the gas phase. And it says that a sample taken from the reaction vessel contains 3.1 mol molar H2, 3.1 moles per liter of H2, and 5.4 moles per liter of H2S. I want to know, is the reaction at equilibrium? And then, once we figure out that, I want to know what the concentrations of reactants and products will be at equilibrium. So, guess what? It's not at equilibrium. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Just give you guys a second. All right, so I'm going to rewrite. Is that good for now? I'm just going to rewrite my um, reaction. I want to have my top of my ice table ready to go. So we're going to have H2 in the gas phase plus sulfur in the solid phase in equilibrium with H2S in the gas phase. And I know I am going to write an ice table, so I'm going to go ahead and lay it out. And I'm going to skip down for a minute after that. So we're going to have initial change <coughs> equilibrium. But we don't know where we are in terms of the equilibrium, right? We didn't say this was an equilibrium mixture. We said we took a sample. Is it at equilibrium? So we don't know for sure if it is. So we'll use our reaction quotient, Q, to determine whether we are at equilibrium. All right, Q has the same, has the same, has the same formula as K. And so for our uh, reaction, it's going to be concentration of H2S over H2. What about sulfur? It's a solid. <coughs> Leave it out. Okay, cool. Yeah, solids and liquids don't go into K. They don't go into Q. All right, so I'm going to plug in the concentrations that were given in the problem into my Q to determine if we are at equilibrium. If we're not at equilibrium, which direction we're going to proceed. So H2S was 5.4 molar, and H2 was 3.1 molar. When I solve, 
I get 1.74. I'm gonna leave the extra sig fig on there for fun. Oh, you guys can't see that. Sorry. Okay. What do we do next? Compare it to K. Okay, our, our K was uh, 0 0.19. Uh, this K equals 0 0.19, just to remember. Now we've got all the info. So our Q value is greater than K. Do we have more, in this mixture, do we have more reactants or products than are expected at equilibrium? More products. So the reaction is going to shift towards the reactant side in order to reach equilibrium. More products than expected at equilibrium. Reaction proceeds towards reactants. Everyone got that? This is a really important calculation to do before we use our ice table. Okay. So I'm going to go back up here. <coughs> so we're going to use these concentrations that we're given, and we're going to use those as our initial <laughs> values in the ice table. So we have 5.4 molar H2S, and we have 3.1 molar H2. Sulfur doesn't matter. I'm just going to draw a big line through it. I don't need to worry about it. Okay. What goes in the change line for H2? Plus X. Everyone agree? Why is it plus X here? because the reaction is proceeding towards the reactant side. So we're going to be losing product, minus x, and we're going to be gaining reactant in order to achieve that equilibrium. Okay. Everyone see that? So this is why it's important to, to figure out Q. Okay, it helps you figure out which sign to put in front of the x on the reactant side or the product side. All right, so in, at equilibrium we'll, for our H2, we'll have 3.1 plus X. Um, and for H2S, we'll have 5.4 minus X. Is that okay? Everyone good on that? <laughs> So now I'll just substitute this into my uh, K expression. I say K equals 0 0.19, and that's going to be equal to products over reactants, 5.4 minus X over 3.1 plus X. And now we can solve. Does anyone need any of this up here? Yeah. Um, our our given concentration up here. So we have. Um, did, I, did I did I write it wrong? Oh. Um, because K is given for the, the reaction written. Yeah, I see what you're asking. Yeah, so K is written for the, the reaction written in the forward direction. So even though we're going the reverse way, you still write products over reactants as written. Good question. Okay, so now there's some algebra. Do you want me to work it out? Please, I forget how to use. Okay. Okay, let's do it. I won't do this very often, but I will do it on this one. All right, this is, this is my guilt. 0 0.19 times 3.1 plus x equals 5.4 minus x. So I'm just taking the denominator and multiplying both sides. All 
0.19 times 3.1 is 0.589. So plus 0.19x equals 5.4 minus x. Now we're going to get x, our, our constants with x on one side and everything else on the other. So we're going to do plus x, plus 1x, plus 1x. Okay. You see why this is, everyone see why this is 1x? It's just x. It's 1x. I don't know. I haven't taught math ever, so what do I need to explain? I don't know. So we'll have 0 0.589 plus 1.19x equals 5.4. Okay, minus 0.589 on both sides. We'll have 1.19x equals 4.811. Divide both sides by 1.19. x equals 4.04. All right, and then we plug our value of x back into what we have at equilibrium from our ice table. So for H2S, it's 5.4 minus 4.04. And for H2, it is 3.1 plus 4.04. And we'll end up with, for H2S, it's 1.3, and I'm going to put sort of small 6. And uh, for H2, it's 7.1 small 4. So the, the small numbers are trying to show that it's not a significant digit. But I left them there because you can go back and check your work now. Because we know that k should be equal to 0.19. So you can know if you've solved these problems correctly. Uh, we have H2S, 1.36, I'm leaving that 6 there, over 7.14 at equilibrium. And that'll give you the correct answer, 0.19. So if you, if you don't use that extra digit, you get something that's like, I think it was like 0.18 or something. It was slightly different. But if you leave that, that second decimal place, it's, you end up with the right number. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on this one before I proceed? Yes? Um, I would say that this is, would be one of the harder ones you would see on the exam. Um, I've been trying to figure out what midterm two may look like. Um, it is, from what I've seen in the past, it's possible that you'll have one problem where you have to use the quadratic formula to solve for x. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Other questions? I'm going to leave you guys to do this one, um, but I'm going to give you the answer just so you can check your work. <laughs> So here we have uh, a, mi um, a mixture of hydrogen and iodide, iodine forming HI. Okay, um, you're trying to calculate K sub C, and you should end up with 50.6. So I'll leave that one to you. I can turn this into a video if that's something you would be interested in. Four. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, in this, in this problem, 
Okay, the reason I would, oh, let me know. The problem here with AD in equilibrium, equilibrium with A plus D, the decomposition, um, I'm going to do this problem. And the reason being is that this is my one example where we can ignore X in relation to the initial concentration. Um, so I can walk, that, walk you through that again. So hopefully hearing it a second time, you'll stick. Um, <coughs> we will see, you don't see a ton of these types of situations in chapter 15. When we uh, get to chapter 16 with uh, acids and bases, we're going to be assuming the X is small very frequently. Um, just makes our life so much easier. But this is a great starter to that. So uh, here we have a very generic decomposition reaction. We have an initial concentration of AD. We don't have any A and we don't have any D. Would you calculate Q in this case? No, there's not really a reason to. You know you're not at equilibrium. There's no products. We know which direction this is going to proceed. It's got to proceed towards the product side. There's just none of them there, right? So to, in order to achieve equilibrium, we have to form some products. OK, so we want to calculate our equilibrium concentrations. We're going to set up an ice table. OK, we'll have our initial concentration, our change, and our equilibrium. You guys want to try this one on your own? I think that might be good. Let's do that. You guys start working through it. I'll walk around. I have been on the antibiotics for 48 hours, so I'm not contagious anymore <laughs> I, if I breathe on you. All right, seeing some good things. All right, uh, so I think most of you got to the point where you figured out that at equilibrium, we're going to have 0.1 mi uh, minus x for AD, and x for A, and x for D. And so when you plug this into <coughs> your k sub c, you're going to end up with k sub c equals 3.0 times 10 to the minus 10, which equals x squared over 0.1 minus x. Now, you could go through and, s and set this all up, and you would end up with a quadratic, solve it with a quadratic formula, and be done with it. I don't love using the quadratic formula. Um, I don't think I've actually you've done it on one of the approved calculators in 10 years. Uh, so um, if I have a quadratic, I'm going to use something else. Um, so, uh, but you can do it, of course. It's just not pleasant. Uh, if, you, if there are assumptions we can make, I recommend doing it. It'll save you time on the exam. It's, it's a nice thought process, too, because it, the way we're going to make an assumption is you've got to actually pay attention to what you're doing. So we're going to look at our values for, for K, and we're going to look at the concentrations that are being considered. When we're doing um, acid-base equilibria, a lot of the problems are going to look just like this where you're going to have uh, something, a, a weak acid, decomposing into its conjugate base and uh, a proton. So it, the formula looks just like this. This is why this example is chosen. The K values will be small just like this. Uh, not always as small as this, but it'll be small, less than 1. And you're going to end up with x squared over some number minus x. Um, so we, what I'm going to tell you is that uh, you can assume that x is negligible when the, let's see, when you, you take, let's do it for the way this is written, when, uh, because, uh, okay, because the concentration of AD is a thousand times greater than K. 
Another way of saying this is that if you divide out the K value and the concentration, you're going to end up with a number larger than 1,000. All right? Um, so this 1,000 percent difference, basically, uh, is going to allow you to assume that X is small. And if you, would, if you think about this, so if we went ahead, you already did the calculations. I'm thinking most of you got it. So X ends up being, where am I? 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. So that's going to be our concentrations in the table and all that. But if you compare this value, the 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, to 0.1, If you have 0.1 minus 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, what do you get? Considering sig figs, what do you get? 0.1, right? So that's why the assumption works. It's usually that the value of x that you're going to get is so small that it really doesn't matter. This is the way you can check it. Okay, if you if you go through with the assumption, calculate it. Um, you can compare, so another way you can check your assumption, you can calculate x, <coughs> compare it to the concentration that you're subtracting from, okay? If it doesn't make a difference, it's negligible, right? Just like in this case. Does that make sense? I know it's a little, a little wonky. We will talk more about this when we do ask some basic questions. We gotta go back. <coughs> I think I just took the square root of 3.0. Okay. What did you end up with? I'll count. Oh, your answer will be uh, right. 5.5 e to the negative 6. That's right. Yeah. Yep, that makes more sense. I was confused too. I'm sorry, guys. I did not get that for ethics. Where's her? McPherson. 2029. 2029. Yep. Yep. That's why everyone was looking at me funny.